Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, we didn't have one for several weeks now, so we have quite a lot to cover um, during this session. So the first one is I want to remind, so it's I'm not sure if it's an announcement or not, but we have the Oktoberfest coming um, pretty soon. And the Jenkins Infra project is definitely a good candidate to receive contribution from people. So if you have some ideas about small tasks that could improve um, the infrastructure, um, feel free to either open a Jira ticket um, or a GitHub issues um, if it makes sense. And I'm planning to work on that in the coming weeks so we could have as many small tickets um, that we could that we could share. I'm going to just move this to the notes. So next thing that I want to share with you, um, so Anton from the Linux Foundation will do a maintenance uh, on Jira database. So he has to change the chart set in order for um, Unicode to work in issues, comments, and description. So the, the, the service will be down for two hours maximum. Uh, but yeah, we never really know for sure with with Jira. But um, so that that maintenance will happen on the fifth of October, twenty twenty one, which is the day before the next stable release. We'll do it. Will do the maintenance at four p.m. UTC. Um, so it should not affect us too much. But that's something to keep in mind. And if you want to move the maintenance to another to a, another time, feel free um, to raise your voice. Um, yep. Oh, difficult to take note and to talk at the same time. Okay. Um, next topic, unless you have a question regarding Jira maintenance. So I mean, it's not it's not a big. Um, yeah, Mark, if you can take the notes, that would be that would simplify me a lot um, here. Thank you. So the next topic that I want to cover briefly cover because it's not all about infrastructure, but we have the election uh, coming. So I wrote a blog post to announce the beginning of the election. So we had a bunch of discussion about community the Jenkins that I know, um, community the Jenkins that I know. So I just um, took all the feedback there and write uh, a blog post. So I would like to publish that blog post on Monday. Uh, so we officially start the election process. If you have any feedback, please do there so we can we can adjust. And so I put two links, one real a link to the PR to publish a blog post. And the second one, I created a small tool that I named EFD for um, email from this course. So it's just a small tool to collect, to, to retrieve email addresses from members of a specific um, discourse group. So the idea is when people join a specific group, they agree to participate to the election, they register to the election, and then we'll use, um, and then we'll fetch email addresses for, for, from that group. So we can send them invitation to participate on the Condorcet voting system. Uh, service. So, but everything is explained in the blog post. So that that's it. The the small tool. I mean, I don't think it will evolve um, a lot once the election is over. But yeah, it may be useful for different purposes. So that's why I created that. I created it. Next topic is about key cloak. So we discover. So due to the confluence. Um, security issues that affected us two weeks ago. Um, we asked people to reset their password by using Quick Cloak, so beta.accounts.jenkins.io, and we identify several issues with the service. Um, one of them is it's using SendGrid to send email. But the problem is, sorry, <coughs> with SendGrid, we are using the default plan, the cheapest one which uh, where we reuse the same IP than other SendGrid clients. And sometimes the reputation of the IP is quite poor. And so our messages, our emails um, are considered as spam um, by some, uh, so some, yeah, some, some, some mailbox. So we have to find, an, we, have, we need to find an improvement um, regarding the SendGrid plan. 
And the second annoying thing with that same ring account is we are limited to only two people who can have access to it, um, which is at the moment Kozuke and me. And so ideally, I would like to have more people or at least all the people who can help with the Jenkins infra and email issues. Tim Jacom earlier today made a, a very good suggestions, which is to integrate um, SendGrid with our Azure accounts. In that case, we'll, we'll be built directly from Azure. Um, that will not evenly affect the Azure um, invoice. So that's really nice. <laughs> and also we would be able to use Azure, an Azure Active Directory for authentication. So more people will be able to access the same grid accounts. So that's something that I'm planning to work on in the coming days, weeks. So to come back to the key cloak, um, so that was one of the issue, email sent from key cloak. The second one, we identify some issues, some integration with LDAP, which is a service that contains the user and passwords. And we still have some improvement to do there. Um, I'm not sure what's the current state because um, if people are still affected by it. Um, what I noticed in my case is sometimes we have a very we have timeout issues when we try to update user from Keycloak, um, but that's something that I need to investigate. Any question? No, sounds good. So yeah, the the same grid point. Um, I covered it in um, during the Keycloak topic. So the next topic is about Azure. So a quick update on Azure. We successfully reduced the cost of the Azure accounts. The last invoice was something like $7,000, um, which is really nice. And I would like us to continue on that path. So we end the year with a good balance because our months, the, the previous months, we were above 10,000 per month, which is the limit that the CDF um, asked us to keep. And so now the idea is to to keep the banana to keep um to keep that number low. So Olivier, do we have a do we have a corresponding dramatic increase in AWS spend, given that AWS donated sixty k? Have we have we consumed all those funds? So we haven't consumed those funds yet, but we definitely increase the cost uh, on the Amazon accounts. We have another project uh, that I want to cover to, to bring here. We have, we received the budget from DigitalOcean, so we now have the money for DigitalOcean, and we would need to configure CI the Jenkins that are to use that budget. And I think that would be really nice to have that for Oktoberfest because during Oktoberfest, during October, because we have more contribution, we have more pull requests, and because we have more more pull requests, we have more uh, loads on our CI infrastructure. So that's something that we need to, to work on. DigitalOcean allow us to, to use a small Kubernetes cluster with three nodes. We still have room for improvement there. So if we can justify more budget on DigitalOcean, I think we may we can we can, yeah. That was just a, a, a first estimation uh, when we talk uh, with DigitalOcean. So definitely the Azure account cost reduce. The Amazon one increased, not as much as uh, Azure, the Azure one, I think. And we still have some uh, fine tuning to do, like the size of the machine, the number of the machine, and so on. At the moment, that's something that I have to double check with Damien, but the limit, the limit at the moment is, should be quite high with the Amazon accounts. But that's something that we may reduce. But yeah, that's just a number that we have to adjust. Thank you. Next topic is yeah, yeah. Next topic is about Oktoberfest. So as I mentioned, we have that coming in October. If you have some ideas, feel free to share them with us. Um, otherwise, if you want to help the the Jenkins project, not necessarily specific to the Jenkins infra, we have some ongoing discussion happening on community the Jenkins IO. So that's the place to go if you want to to, to coordinate effort there. The next topic is about Packer images. I know that Debian has been working on that. Um, unfortunately, it's not there to do um, an update. So I will not risk myself to explain all the things there. So I guess, yeah. 
So I guess it's just better to keep that topic for next week. Um, Digital Ocean, we briefly covered that one. Um, so I propose to just continue to the wiki exports. So as you know, two weeks ago, we were affected uh, by- Olivier, yeah, could, you, could you scroll your screen up so that we've got- Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder, Mark. Um, so as I was saying, Two weeks ago, we were affected by a major security issues um, with wiki.jenkins.io, and that's a service that we did not really maintain for years now. Most of the data that, that we have there is quite old, um, but we did not really find the time to migrate um, the content elsewhere. So the current state of the machine now, um, the service is stopped, uh, Confluence is stopped. We we restore. We did the copy to a, another location, a machine, a bigger machine that that we can do some experiments. So now the the purpose is to to find the best way to extract all the contents um, that we have on Confluence, and then to to migrate that content to the right location. So Gavin um, has been doing some work on that topic. So he created a Git repository named Jenkins Infra slash plugins dash wiki dash docs. So he exported plugin documentation um, on that Git repository that was not yet um, exported, but we still have, so the plugin documentation issue is still, it's, it's solved now, um, but we still have a lot of other pages um, on Confluence, such as meeting notes, uh, like uh, first them organization, um, contributor summit, and quite a lot of information. Those data, we don't necessarily want to lose them. So I've been trying to export Confluence pages to, to HTML. So that's that there is a tool directly in Confluence that we can use. Um, for that, let me let me show you something. So at the moment, I exported one of its contents. Um, we, the, the only thing that I have at this time is the exported files don't necessarily match uh, what you see. So you should see my screen here. So the, the, the CSS is slightly different than what you have on Wiki. URL, URL as well. So for example, in this case, you can see that we have a small checksum um, page uh, and with that HTML. So we may have some cleanup to do. So what I was suggesting was just to ex export all every pages to HTML pages and then upload them to archive.jenkins.io. So we would have archive.jenkins.io slash wiki and we would just export all the contents by default there. So that's a suggestion. If you have a better ID, um, I'm really open to suggestions at the moment. Um, but what I know for sure is we won't put back, we, we won't bring back Confluence. Um, any question? So I'm still hoping that we could get a, some way of easily doing redirects from wiki.jenkins.io URLs to archives.jenkins.io. Given the URLs in, in the base, it looks promising, even if we dropped the slash wiki, but I'll, I'll take it up with you separately, Olivier. I think you're on the right track. We need to extract the HTML so that we don't lose the HTML. Okay, we can, yeah, we can work on that together. Next topic, which is about artifactory issues. Oh, so actually, so, since Damien has joined us, maybe we could bring back the topic on on the Packer images. I yeah. dropped it uh, into the maybe list. Maybe, yeah, okay. Oh, sorry, it's already yeah, there. That, yeah, that's the last topic. Let's proceed on artifactory. Okay, so, so the artifactory topic was mine that I put in. Um, I see that we, we had a, a failure to download an artifact from repos.jenkins-ci.org. Is there a way we would like those flagged? Should I be, should I raise an issue? What, what we, and I've, I've seen these before, this is not an, a completely isolated incident, incident. How would you like them reported? What's the best way to do it? 
So the, the question in this case is we are not, so do, do the file is supposed to, to be there? Or, yes, yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, it's it, supposed, because something that, that affected us in the past, like several years ago, we had the same issue where, um, um, where we were not allowed to do that amount of requests now with a repo the Jenkins audio. So we put in place at that time a proxy cache on the CI environments. So maybe that's something that we could do again, especially in the especially considering that. Um, but that's maybe something that I have to investigate with Damien because everything is running on a Kubernetes cluster. So we could deploy a cache uh, local to the to the agents because that's definitely the problem here. I'm not really queen on such solution to be quite honest because the um, the combination of uh, management the time to spend on managing such an instance uh, the io that it requires the costs in terms of infrastructure and the amount of problem that it can cause due to caching to the developers because you are that's a special area where the developers cannot control the cache and uncache which mean unless we've yeah, I, I don't know. I, I had a pretty bad experience on cooperation before uh, on that one. Um, so I would prefer to to see if there are other alternative solution. But the, the, the goal is to what? make the developers, the users, pretty autonomous. And this remove this from them because they won't be so, able unless they bypass the cache. Wait, wait, so wait, 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 something. Sorry, but yeah, Tim, go. As I say, we just ran an artifactory on our CI cluster for the last three years. And we've only had to touch it like five times in three years in, in general. It's, so we used to we used to um, have bin tray as our upstream, but we were having bin tray on reliability issues. And so we just deployed an artifactory on our CI cluster and it's been pretty much completely hands off and just worked. Yeah, that's my suggestions. Yeah, Otherwise, we, something that I did in the past was to deploy an Nginx proxy cache on the cluster as well. Um, so that was pure caching in that case. But the problem in here is we don't really control repo the Jenkins that I own. So we can open we can open issues with Gfrog, um, but at that instance, it's fully sponsored, so we don't have any SLA with them. Yeah, fair. It's just that we just we just exited a CV issue on something that we dumped somewhere and didn't touch for free for a few years. So honestly, I, yeah, right now it feels that we are overwhelmed by the amount of tasks. So yeah, I would prefer asking Gfrog to increase their SLA or maybe consider another service or consider our own artifactory from scratch without the help of Gfrog. But yeah, a mix of these solutions seems the worst case to me. Because if we have to but pay for, case, uh, for an instance, we have to do, let's have one that we master from scratch. In the case of team superposition, it's just to have an artifactory which would just work as a proxy cache. So that would just reduce the amount of connection. But yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe this is something that we need to discuss um, with different POC. Uh, yeah. That, that would be an idea also to check with Daniel and the security people, because uh, maybe the argument for a, a spawning instance will be, yeah, we need to have art tiny artifactories as a service inside the infra, especially for the release, pre-release in order to build them. So if we have to build this, then that means we will have to, to spawn two free instances. So in that case, the cost will be worth it. I don't think there's any need for anything like that. If we just keep it as, if it's just pure proxy, so keep repo as canonical, and then this is just a CI proxy. It's not used yeah. for anything else. Yeah, yeah, the instance in itself will be separated. Uh, that's correct. But the the amount of work automation or action to to uh, to use it, if we have to reuse it two or three times, that it starts to be worth the effort. If we only have one instance, then the question still uh, still is kept. The, the problem, the problem, if you have one instance, is in the current situation we have some agent on Azure, some agent less on Azure now, but we have agent on Amazon, 
and we're going to have it jump on digital ocean soon. So the suggestion here is just to build a Docker image that is just a proxy cache uh, with release um, to repo the Jenkins org slash release, no configuration, no authentication, just read only. Um, and so we would deploy it on DigitalOcean and Amazon and elsewhere if we end up using a different cloud provider. So if if it's just a proxy cache, I don't think. But I agree. Oh, I don't think it will uh, be. But, again, yeah. it's not that easy. How do you uncache? How do you ensure that it's synchronized with the the upstream system? That, that's that's why GFrog and, and Nexus are are building their business. I mean, it's not as easy as having because the content is not immutable. The, the content, especially the snapshot builds, all the snapshots, the metadata are always changing, right? So only use... Nginx, not sure. Yeah, we, we don't really use set, set snapshots though. So it is generally don't, yeah. don't we? No. no, we're using incrementals in general. Which is a which is a which is like a release, but not in the official release repo, and those are immutable. Okay, so if it's immutable, so, then yeah. it can make sense. But yeah, again, that, that's some, yeah. I mean, I, I I know I know I saw some discussion with Jesse as well, uh, because that's a recurring topic. Um, I mean, we are not the only one to have that kind of issues. So yeah i think that would be a nice nice project to to investigate the different options that we can have and which one yeah. we take it's just because yeah, the I, problem is there yeah. we, if we have to do it let's do it for multiple use for the benefits of the end users and not only for the benefits of uh, saying uh, we want better performances i mean if it happens one or twice a year the issue on gfrog that's totally worth it not wasting time and maintaining something else or paying for something else we have too much services right now that we are, uh, I mean, there are more production and QA issues that we should focus on, unless it really solve, uh, it really yeah. brings more values for the end users. That, that's what I mean. We just have to balance correctly. Yeah, like I don't, it's, I haven't seen it too much recently, but there's certainly been off and on quite a lot of issues ever since they upgraded us to the new platform, just random instability. Um, but I think we're having more problems with like core builds and remoting builds. The tests aren't, um, there's a lot of random issues happening, okay. um, possibly since we moved to the Kubernetes agents. Um, but it's kind of hard because they're having different issues on, on ACI. At least okay. now they are, not they are not prone to security issues. <laughs> not using ACA. OK, perfect. Um, thanks for your insights. Any last comments on repo.jenkins.org? So Do we I have a written discussion on this course or about this topic? I remember uh, an email yet. Fred. So I so that that's that's a discussion I, I saw discussion happening on a Jenkins in from mailing list, Jenkins dev mailing list. That's a, that's a recurring issue because we faced the same issue like three or four years ago um, with repo.jenkins.io, which was not able to handle the load. Um, and then we realized that after a while, the, the proxy cache performance was bad compared to the improvement that Chifrog did. So we decided to remove the proxy cache at some point. Um, and may maybe the situation will just improve um, on GFrog side because, yeah, as we mentioned, um, they migrated our service to a newer platform. So maybe that's the time for them to do better um, control. The, I mean, to better size the, the the infrastructure below the service. So maybe we can just wait a few weeks and see how, t how it evolves. We have two minutes left before the end of the meeting. So I propose that we quickly cover, I mean, quickly cover the last topic, which is the Packer images. Now, Damien, that you are here. Please uh, review um, uh, review my last pair that should enable automatic upgrade of the VM on CI Jenkins IO. If it works, then it will be automatically opening a pull request with the latest AMI builds today. And once the second pull request is merged, then it will update CI Jenkins IO. So let's test the full end-to-end. -end. Then next week, 
I'll, I'll focus so, on the team uh, feedbacks. So it's which, on Jenkins which PR? Infra. Jenkins Infra. That's the other one on the one. Yep. Jenkins Infra. Ah, oh, yes. OK, sorry. On the Puppet Kit repository. Exactly. So, so and the second is thing is here. that um, Windows Server on mm -hmm. Azure is the worst. I've counted 11 different errors this week that I had to fix. Some are random, some are, are less random. Uh, that's a okay. nightmare. So I, I don't this, know this, so what are the feedback. Yep. Which pair enable automatic yes, this one. MEI for yes. us? OK, perfect. Okay, I've tried to can... write down as much information as possible. Let me let me put the link to the PR here. I try to find some time to review it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, let's cover this next week. Um, I already put a link to next week Jenkins Infra meeting. So if you have to be topic you want to cover, oops, that's not what I want. So if I go back here, I will probably miss next week's meeting. I'll be in Alaska. Okay, that's a good excuse. So I just put a link to the next week meeting at the bottom of this page. Um, so feel free to add some topic there. So we are a little bit over time. So thanks everybody for your time and have a great weekend. So